Okay, I zoomed in a little bit. I, I don't have this, the heater wires soldered in here yet, but I wanna show you what I'm doing. There's gonna be a difference in the way you wire the heaters using one of these police radio transformers like I'm using versus the Hammond transformer. And I'll show you what that difference is. Usually, not always, but usually, those wires are green for the heater. The heaters are the, the filaments in the tubes, right? The things that get hot, right? So I've got this lead coming out of the transformer, 6.3 volts, right? That green one, and this is 6.3 volts, one amp of power. And there's a green yellow wire, which is the center tap, just like we had a red yellow wire, which is zero volts, center tap on the high voltage red wires. In the middle of the two green on this transformer, the Hammond one, we have a center tap. Some transformers don't have a center tap. If this does have a center tap, you just put this green yellow wire to a ground point. And I would have actually put it right here if this transformer had it, just because it was coming right out. It's grounded right where my red and yellow wire is, right? My red and yellow wire is at this point as well. I would attach the green and yellow at this point. And what that does is that it really keeps noise down uh, from the heaters. The heaters are AC and that AC current, alternating current, is going to go to the tube filaments. We don't use, in this case, we're not using DC for um, the filaments. You can run DC to filaments. In this amp it's not necessary. In some high gain amps it can help. That's a whole nother topic is running DC heaters. Um, most of the time AC is just fine. So what I've done in this case, because this transformer does not have a center tap, I'm gonna create what's called an artificial tap for these. So it doesn't have one, it only has the two green wires for the filaments. So what I've done is I've attached one green wire to this lug by itself, and this green wire to this lug by itself. And you can see the way Terry's done it on this schematic, Terry from D-Lab Electronics, he used the same transformer I used, which does not have a center tap. So he is creating an artificial center tap. And this is exactly how to do it, right? So we have the green wire and the green wire. What we don't have is a center tap. So we're gonna make one. This 100 and 100, that's two resistors that go to ground. The middle of those resistors go to ground between each of these two wires. 100 ohm resistors creating an, an artificial center tap. So that's the way we're gonna do it here. If you have the Hammond transformer, you can probably skip ahead for a minute and uh, just connect the green yellow wire to a ground point, right? So let's do it. Let's create the artificial center tap. All we need is two, back this up a little bit, two 100 ohm resistors. So I'm gonna go into my little resistor kit. Again, I only need like a, a one watt resistor. Actually a half watt would be totally fine. Um, but I have this kit of all one watt resistors and you can use carbon film resistors. That's totally fine for this. Uh, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for 100. Oh, see, I only got one left in here. I have another pack of these um, that I'll have to get. But notice how I'm not using 100K. I'm not using this 100K. That's way, 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 way more of resistance than we need, right? This is 100 without any K after it. It just means 100 ohms. And that's what we're going to use. Okay, I had an extra pack of 100 ohm resistors. I just kind of replenished my little stash here. These are always just very easy because they're cataloged in order of low resistance all the way up to high resistance, right? And they're easy to find. So I've got two... 100 ohm resistors. One is here. Let's move this back over for you. And one snuck away from me right here. All right. So we just have to connect these to uh, the green wires, one to each green wire, and then connect them together to ground, right? So the way we do that is I'll show you this way. We're gonna put one of them, because I have one green wire here and one green wire here. We're gonna run one of them from this point to ground, because remember, this is a ground lug. It has a screw attaching it. And then we're gonna put this one to the other green wire also to ground. So let me do that to show you.
Okay, I've got it wired in. I've got the artificial center tap wired in. Not super pretty, but it works, right? So I've got the two 100 ohm resistors. I've got one green wire attached to this lug, one end of the 100 ohm resistor going here, all the way over to the ground. And the second one is right here, second green wire, through a 100 ohm resistor to ground. That's our artificial center tap. And again, don't create an art artificial center tap if your transformer already has a center tap for the filament windings, right? If it already has a green yellow wire, just attach that wire to ground. Don't use 100 ohm resistors because it's already there for you, but some transformers might not have one. That's gonna keep your noise down by creating an artificial center tap, all right? So the reason why I landed those two green wires to two terminals here is because it kind of gives me a good landing point. I could have run these straight to, um, I don't know, like over here and to a tube socket, but I can run wires here and here and here uh, pretty easily. And I can also later on use this if I'm gonna put like an LED light or a pilot light in the circuit. And I'll show you that later because I probably am gonna add uh, some type of an LED circuit to this thing. Um, and I have terminals that I can tap off of uh, pretty easily. So I did wanna land these green wires right to here, if you were using the Hammond, you don't have to do that. You could have just put the green wire straight to the first tube, right? And the way to do that would be wherever the tube filaments go. I'm going to do the tube filaments later, but you can see it doesn't really explain where these things go. Two heaters. See, it says two heaters, but there's no lines drawn. It's because it would create a lot of extra lines in this drawing and be kind of confusing looking. Um, but the heaters are usually pins in these tubes are pins two and seven. So you can see two, seven, two and seven, and two and seven for this. All of them are two and seven. Not all tubes are going to be pins two and seven for the heaters. So if it's not on the schematic showing you where the heaters are, just look up the data sheet, right? Look up like we were looking at before. Look up the data sheet for one of these tubes. This is a 6F6 tube. And where is that? Here it is. This will show you where the heaters are. So 2 and 7 is H for the heaters, right? Sometimes it's a little more obvious depending on, depending on the data sheet. This is the uh, 6X5. And it might tell you... Um, H for heaters right there, two and seven, right? All right, so that's how you find out where the heaters go, but I'm gonna wire those later. I actually kind of do that last usually. Um, I just wanted to have a landing spot for my green wires. Later, we're gonna run wires off of that stuff, okay? Okay, so we're gonna skip the wiring of the heaters and we're gonna go to, um, to finish the rest of the uh, filter section. We've, we pretty much have all that done. We just have to run the leads out to the other parts. So we know this one's already run to the transformer. That's the red wire that goes to the 47 UF. We need to run a second one here from the 22 UF positive in the intersection of these two resistors all the way up. Notice how you see these little jump jumpers here. That just means it's not connected to this wire. It's jumping over that or going underneath of it. If it, if it is a straight intersection, it means it's connected in this particular schematic. Sometimes they'll have a little dot there showing that there's an actual point of connection. Uh, but here, there's no connection to these wires if it has a little jumper, okay? So that's just what that little jumper means. So this is not connected to here or here. It just runs right underneath of it and goes to pin four of the 6F6. So let's find the 22UF cap, that's this one here and the intersection of these two resistors, that's where the 22 UF cap is. And we need to run a wire from that lug to the 6F6 tube. And we need to do it to pin four. And we already know this is pin three because this is part of our output transformer. So one, two, three, four. So it needs to go right there. So I need a wire from here to there. I'm gonna go ahead and just use red because I know that there's a lot of high voltage on that line and you're just kind of keeping my own color coding going on here where I know there's going to be a lot of voltage. 
right? So what I need to do is put one wire. Um, I could just connect it through here, or I could use this little bottom hole here because this is all part of the same lug. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't have anything connected there right now. What I'd like to do is, since that hole is already open, take a little bit of the paste flux and kind of put it on that hole. And it'll definitely make the solder stick better um, in this case. So I'm actually going to put it on both of these a little bit. And it's not coming off of there. Hold on. All right, I think I got enough on there. Um, and I'm going to push this wire back and kind of set it right there. Actually, I can push a lot of it back. I'm going to do that because I, I don't want my solder, soldering iron touching uh, the, the cloth what part of the wire when I'm soldering. It just um, doesn't make a good connection usually. So I just want to really touch metal to metal. So I'm going to put my iron on there for a second, let it get hot. You can kind of see the smoke from the... Uh, from the um, flux, right? And I'm just gonna get that nice and hot. And it flowed right inside of there, right? So if I try to pull this out, I can't pull that out. So now I'm gonna push the wire back on there and make sure that on the other side, it's not sticking out, able to touch something. There is a little bit sticking out, it's not touching anything, but I'm gonna clip that off. I'll do that in a minute. Just in case. Um, so this needs to run. I'm going to tuck it real close. Uh, or actually, I'll fix that in a minute. I just need to be able to... Let me put it like this. It'll probably be easier to work with. I just need to run it down here to this pin. To pin number four. So this is our... We're going to call it the B plus two. Right? B plus A or B plus one. B plus two. B plus three. All right, and I'm gonna push this back just a little and pop it into the tube. I'm gonna bend it downward just to make a nice, good mechanical connection. And I'm actually gonna crimp it really close to the pin to just make for a nice connection. Now you could put a little flux on, um, on the pins. I find that there's such a small area to solder that I don't really have to put flux everywhere. Um, you can, but if you put too much flux on there, you kind of have to clean it off because it will corrode things over time. So I'm only usually putting flux on these terminal strips where they're much bigger areas to solder. So let's take a look at that. That's a good solid connection to pin four. Okay, so I've got that wire and I need one more wire that's going to go from the B plus three, where our 10 UF cap is and this 10K resistor, I need to run that here. Again, there's jumpers, so it's not connected to these wires. It just runs right all the way over here. And here's the first thing it connects to, a 240K resistor and a 1M resistor, right? So it's this little junction point here. So that's a good spot that I think we should put a connected to a terminal strip because this 240 is then going to connect to something else and the 1M is going to connect to something else and so on. So let's put it, I'm going to go ahead and run it all the way over to this one because I know it has to connect to, something's got to connect close to this volume pot. Sorry, here's the volume pot. 240 through this cap to a volume pot and then this goes here. Actually, I'll go ahead and put it on, I'm going to put on this second one here doesn't really matter but um, I want to be able to have enough uh, terminals open that I can attach other things to okay all right so so what I want to do is same thing here this is where the 10 UF cap connects and the 10k resistor and I'm just gonna set it there Actually, I think I'm going to push back a little bit more wire. I could push it in there and bend it, but 
it's gonna be kind of hard to get into this area. So let's get this good and hot. Put some solder on, let it flow into the into the hole there and sort of make a connection all the way through, right? All right, that's good and tight. I'm yanking on it pretty good. It's not going anywhere. All right, so again, we're gonna run this over. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and run it underneath of everything. Just keep it nice and tucked. Okay. And uh, I decided to connect it to this lug here. If I had drawn this out better, I'd probably maybe have a better lug to put it to, but I, I didn't really make my own draw out lay, layout for this. And it's not that many parts, so I'll be able to figure it out. It's just, I'm putting it there because whether I have a component that needs to connect to ground, it's pretty close to ground. It's also pretty close to another open connection. So that's kind of why I just chose somewhere in the middle. Right, I just I know things are going to come off of this. So what I've done here is similar to what I did on the other terminal strip. Is I just put it through the bottom and bent it up. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flux on. You don't have to, but I find that it does make things it does make that solder flow better. All right. So let's get it hot. Put some solder in, kind of move it around a little bit. There we go. Really good connection. All right, so that's connected there. So that is where our B plus three is coming out of. Now I do want to clean these up because these leads did go through here a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can get my clippers in there. I know this might be hard to see on video, uh, yeah, see, I can't even get those down there, so I'll have to, I may have to get some pliers and bend them up or get a smaller, thinner pair of clippers and clip them, just because it's so tough to get down in there. They're not touching anything I'm worried about. I just don't want them to accidentally move around and get bent and touch the chassis and ground out, okay? So I'll come back and clean that up in a minute. And uh, now we have this connected, so now we can start looking at... Um, what else has to get connected to what, right? Uh, so everything so far, except for the heaters, is connected to the 6X5, so we're done that tube. The 6F6 power tube, we're almost done because we've already connected something to pin three and pin four right here, right? Pin three is coming from the output transformer. Pin four is going to the grid. That's what the dashed line is, is a grid. And that comes down to our filtering. We need something attached to pin eight, this component, and pin five is gonna go over to the volume pot. So we can actually do that now. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, yellow for that, um, yellow or blue, because it's not high voltage. Um, so I need, I need to run a wire from pin five to the volume pot up here. So I'm just gonna get a generous length of wire and I'm gonna go ahead and run this. I think I'm gonna run it around this way to the pot. All right, so let's... Let's bend this a little bit. So this is pin three, pin four, pin five. I'm going to bend that lead down a little bit and crimp it close to the pin. It'll make a nice solid connection. It's hard for me to do this because I have the camera right in front of my face. <laughs> All right, pin five, let's solder it. Nothing else goes to pin five but this wire. So I, I, I'm safe to solder this in now. All right, I just need to make sure it's good. Let's make sure we got a good connection there. Yeah, the pin moves around a little bit, but the wire's not pulling out of there, so we're good. All right, uh, I almost didn't have enough wire, but it looks like I do. All right, so how do we know which one of these things it needs to go to on the volume pot? 
is pretty easy because usually on these schematics, most of the time, um, here's that pin five, right? We ran a wire out of pin five. A pot usually is labeled like a resistor because a pot is a resistor. It's a variable resistor. It goes from zero to some value, right? So in this case, it goes to one meg, right? That's the same as a one meg resistor. So if I were to put a one meg resistor there, this is a 1M resistor. That's the same exact value as this pot. I actually wrote 1M on the back of it so that I knew what value it was easily from this side, right? Usually they have a label on the other side that's next to the chassis you can't see. So what I do is uh, when it's in the center of the resistor, that's usually the center lug here, right? When it's looking left to right like this, you have this one's gonna go to ground, right? The one on the left. And the one on the right is going to connect to this component right here, okay? So we know we need to attach this to the middle lug, right? So what I usually do is I come up, come up through the bottom here and bend it over and sort of crimp it. I'll clean that wire up. I'm, I may actually run a little bit longer wire so it's not, so I can kind of tuck it away. Um, again, the shorter the wires, the better. So it doesn't really matter. But for neatness, an extra inch on here would have probably been a little better. Okay, that's connected. So I actually might be able to do it like this and it might look a little nicer. That'll work. All right, so that's the pin five going to the center of the thing. Do we have anything else we need to connect to the 6F6 power tube? We're pretty much done everything here except for this last piece and the heaters. So this pin eight, we need a resistor, which is a 750 ohm, five watt. That's the highest wattage value resistor we need in this amp. And a 100 UF cap at 63 volts. So when you see a cap around a resistor, notice how the cap's connected to one side of the resistor and the other side, like this. And this is a, this is a polarized cap. It has a plus sign, right? So the positive end is going to go here, which is connected to pin 8. And the negative side is going to be connected to ground with the resistor. So a lot of times what I do, it's just kind of easier, is those two components are together. Let me grab those two. And I've got, um, you don't have to use a radial cap like this where both leads are coming out at the, coming out of one side, you can use two sides. Um, but I like to kind of put one side on, on one side of the resistor and the other on the other side. And then I can just solder the resistor into place where it's supposed to go, right? Because we know that this thing right here, if we look at it this way, here's the resistor, here's our cap. I can just put one on one end and one on the other end. I just gotta make sure I put the positive end on uh, the right side when we solder. It doesn't matter when I'm doing it here, which side I do it on, as long as when I solder it in, I know I'm putting it to the right side. So I am, I'm not really that concerned at this stage about what, uh, what side I'm soldering to what. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend these leads out and take this down and just put a couple twists around it. Okay, and then hold this side, same thing. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna clip off those extra leads here and here. And at this point, I can actually put a dab of solder on that so that it won't uh, come loose on me and we know it's making a nice solid connection. So, put a dab there, the other side, here, I'm just going to put a little dab on my soldering iron and do it this way. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so this cap is soldered to the resistor. Now notice this is the negative side. So now automatically this becomes the side that needs to go to ground because this is the negative side of the cap and this is the positive side. So let's see where they go. All right, this is what's actually gonna bias 
this 6F6. It's going to be a fixed bias, so uh, it, you can't change it with a pot in this case. You don't need to in a small amp like this. In a larger amp, you might see a pot that will adjust the bias, right? And that'll generally be some value like this resistor is where you can go from like zero to some number, right? 750 ohms, right? Or something. So this is a 5 watt 750 ohm resistor, which is a cement resistor. You could use a uh, one of those metal oxides like these, but a 5 ohm or sorry, 5 watt metal uh metal oxide resistor looks like this. It's pretty big. There you go. This is actually a 470 ohm, but you can see it's about the same size almost as the as the cement ones. But these take high heat really well, you know. Um, so we want it to be five Watts. Um, it could be 10 Watts, 10 watt one would be really huge. So we don't need that. Uh, but, uh, we try to not go lower than what the schematic recommends as far as the wattage value of the resistors. So anyway, I'm talking a lot, but let's get to the soldering pin eight needs to be the positive side. And then the rest of this, the other side needs, just needs to go to ground. That's it. So let's see what we got. We've got... Pin eight is, this is three, two, one, eight. Right. Well, the easiest way would probably be here to this lug, right? Cause that's a ground lug. That's the closest. I'm going to put the, oops, see I almost wired it wrong. The negative side to ground, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that through there. Just kind of hold it in place. And then this side, through here, right? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just bend this upward to make a solid connection next to the, to the pin here. All right, a little bit of solder. Okay. And, uh, and straighten this up just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and probably going to solder something else to this ground point as well, but I'll just go ahead and put a little dab on there for now just to hold it in place. Did I just pull that? I just pulled that loose. So again, see how that, that connection just came loose on me. That's what can happen to you sometimes. That wasn't a good enough solder connection. I didn't apply enough heat there. The other thing I forgot to do was put the flux on. I don't know why it's just these terminal strips, even if you scrape them up like I did before where I sanded them to allow the solder to um, kind of seep into those cracks and stick without, without enough flux. Now this solder has some flux in it. It's like 60, 40, right? Um, but it's not enough to make a really good connection. So that came loose on me. Now it's definitely not coming loose on me. It's a good solid connection. So I'm, I could probably tilt this upward. For now, I'm just going to leave it like this. It's not really hurting anything. Um, if I need room over here when I get to this socket, I may bend this upward. But I have my negative side of the... Make sure this negative side of the uh, cap is on the ground. The positive side to pin 8. So... We are pretty much done our 6F6 and our 6X5 minus wiring the actual heaters, which I'm going to do last. Everything else is connected. So we've got filter section done. We've got all the transformer stuff done, the switch. We've got the power tube done. All that's done. All we need to do now is the preamp section. And let's see what we need. So let's. I'm going to kind of just trace this. It's just easier to follow. By, instead of just starting to put components on, I'm going to follow it where I already have a lead going. So we ran, remember we ran this lead out here, and it needed to go to a 240K resistor uh, and also a 1M resistor right here. There's a point where these two are connected. 240 is going to go to some component that's going to go to the pot, and then this connection is another one, which is 1M, which is going to go to another connect, uh, thing and pin 6. Okay, 
So let's do the 240 and let's get the 240 resistor and the 1M resistor out. Okay, I don't actually have a 240 resistor, 240K resistor. Uh, I actually might, but I've done this build before with a alternate. Um, the next value I have is 220 or two, the 280. Uh, let me see. I'm just looking at my kit here. 180, two, 270, sorry. So this kit has 270 uh, and 220. I'm going to go ahead and go with the 220K. It's a little bit less resistance than this, but it's going to be fine in this build. Um, I've done that before. So you can make a substitute in some cases um, <clears throat> like this. And it will be just fine. Excuse me. All right. So I got a 220. I've got a 1M. Let's get those out. And both of these have to connect together according to that schematic. So we just need to find out. We know that they connect to this, this wire here that we ran, which actually is this red wire connected to that lub. Remember, we came across and we put it there. So both of these need to connect to that spot, right? Because that's this wire and they split off and they go different directions. So one's going to go to a 2UF cap that's going to go to the pot, right? So what I'm going to do is that one is the 240K. So that's this guy here. I'm going to actually just bend him and go to the next lug. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next lug here. I'm trying to keep these neat sometimes is difficult. <laughs> right, I'm just gonna bend them up to hold it in place. But I did it this way because um, then I can use this lug to connect the 0.02 UF cap to the to the pot. And I might not even need to run a wire to do that if the 0.02 UF cap uh, leads are long enough. So let's see. So my point, let's see, this is a, that's not the right one. The one I chose to use is this Sozo, it says 223 on it. That's 0.02 UF, right? So this is a tone cap. And that's going to go to this side of the volume pot. Notice how the left side is going to ground. The middle is this yellow wire we ran. And the right side goes to the cap, which then connects to the 240 resistor. So we want to connect this cap here, right, on this terminal. And it needs to go to the volume pot. So what I'm going to do is... Try to just bend this up. The leads are totally long enough. I'm not worried about that. Chop some of this excess off. Now, one thing I don't want it to do is I do not want it to touch. Um, I don't want it to touch the back of the pot, this lead, right? So for safety, I'm gonna put some heat shrink on that because the back of this pot is ground. I don't want this to go to ground. It didn't say it needs to go to ground. It just says it needs to go to this third lug. So let's put a piece of heat shrink over that to protect it from accidentally moving and touching the back of the pot. So what I need is about, if I decide to put this thing right here, well, let's just cut a little piece and then we'll see if we need to trim it down a little bit. Is this gonna be too long? Nope, that's perfect. Okay, so let me take this out of here and shrink it up. You only need a second or two for that. And then I'll just keep it, you know, from that'll keep it staying on there a little better. And then I push that into here, bend it over just to make a nice mechanical connection. Sorry, just a sec. I'm trying to hold this in spot. There we go. So see, I didn't, in point to point, I don't need to run an extra wire. Uh, the, the goal is trying to reduce the amount of wires and things in a point to point build. It means 
try to make the connection from one point to the other, right? So now I've got I've got this uh, shielded. So if it accidentally moves and touches the back of the pot, it's not going to ground out. Right now, it's actually resting on the back of the pot. So I'm safe, though, because it is covered. So smart thing to do, especially if you think it's close to something uh, where it could ground out. All right. So let's go ahead and... I'm going to bend these guys up. Let's go ahead and put a dab of solder on that lug because it'll hold my resistor in place and secure that cap as well. I don't know if anything else needs to get connected to this lug yet or not. Um, I'll go back and touch up all my solder connections later. I just right now want to kind of anchor things in place. That's the goal. All right, so that's pretty stable. This is stable on this side. Remember, um, the red coming out of here, out of the power, that's gonna be high voltage. It's gonna go through this um, resistor, which is our 240K? Yeah, our 240K resistor to the 0.02 UF cap to the volume. So we got that part done. 240 through the 2 UF to the one side of the volume pot. This side, we're gonna just run to ground um, but for now, let's see what this junction where it breaks off and comes to a 1U, a 1M cap. I'm sorry, a 1M resistor. Let's, let's make that connection. The other side of that 1M is going to need a 0.047 cap to ground and connect to pin 6 of this tube. So let's see where pin 6 is. It should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Cool thing is it's facing right where it needs to go okay so we have our 220k or on the schematic it says 240 we're using a 220 we need to take and split off from this side i'm just looking at this a 1m resistor so i'm going to put a 1m resistor through here to this next lug okay and I'll, I'll show you that on the schematic again in a second. Let me just bend these over a little bit. And put these two through here. Okay. And at this point, I think I can actually solder this. Because this, this one is done. This is the one where our red wire is connected. Uh, I probably should have put a little flux on that. Let's see how she does. I think, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. They're both, they're both on there. Good. All right. So the one M goes across, it's connected to the 220 or the 240, right? K resistor it goes across to here. There's nothing else right now connected to this 1M. Um, so let's see what else has to get connected to the 1M. So the 1M on the other side needs a 0.047 cap that gets connected to ground. Notice how this cap and the 0.02 doesn't have a plus sign. Remember when we were working with these caps down here, these polarized caps? They had a plus and a minus. These do not have a plus and a minus. They are non-polarized caps, and you'll see these a lot used in tone circuits, right? Um, so it does not matter which direction you put them. Like this one I did, forgot to mention, it doesn't have a plus or a minus. It doesn't matter which side you use. If it's not indicated there uh, that it's a plus or minus cap, or if you don't see it on the cap where it has a negative side or a plus side, then you don't have to worry about which orientation that goes. But this M needs a 0.047 and it needs to connect to pin six right, as in my parts box so this is the you'll see it on here on this particular type sozo it says 473k and that's a point zero four seven um i know it's confusing you can look up what these values actually mean sometimes on certain types of caps it'll actually tell you what the value is like these orange drops Oh no, it does have a code there too. So it's 333J, that's 0.033UF. 
So you get used to those codes, you just might have to look them up. Again, this doesn't have a plus or a minus side. It just can go anyway. So I need to take one end of this to ground and one end to our 1M uh, capacitor. So I could either go to this ground or I could go to this ground. It doesn't really matter. Um, having one ground point for like the preamp stuff is kind of a good idea. And this is a ground for our power tube. It could go there. I don't think it's going to cause any extra excess noise, but I am going to run it to this lug just because I'm going to have some other stuff connecting to that lug as well. So one thing I'm going to try to do here is use up some of this bottom space um, of the terminal strip so I don't have so many things floating on top because I, I know I got more stuff to put on here. So I'm going to put it through those bottom holes like we did before. So I need to kind of gauge if I put this here to ground and I need the other end to connect to this then I need to bend this a little closer. Something like this to here. Roughly. All right. I'm going to trim this back just a hair so I can, I don't have as much to work with. All right, let's see if that'll work. So I'm, I, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to put heat shrink around this if it touches this screw because it's already ground. It's already the ground lug. Um, I could so that it makes connection with the very center of that hole. But it, this, in this case, it really doesn't matter uh, because it's all, it's all one post. It's all one, this whole post is ground. Is touching the chassis right so I'm not gonna heat shrink that and I could heat shrink the other side to be careful however I don't think I'm going to because this thing's gonna be so close to the terminal strip and nothing else is really in its way right now so I'm not worried about it secure that ground connection there and it's a good idea just to keep you're not working with a delicate circuit board here that your soldering iron can burn things up. So you can leave it on there for a few se extra seconds and it shouldn't damage anything just to make sure that it's really, really solid. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to get that good and hot. See, be careful because you don't want to want this to move on you before that solder solidifies. So I am going to keep my finger there until it <sighs> fully sets. All right, it's good. Solid, solid connection. So again, we went from the 1M here over to ground through the 47, uh, sorry, 0 .047 UF cap. You put a touch of solder here. I'll come back and touch these up later, but I just don't want that resistor moving on me too much. I also want to be able to cut off this excess. So the other side, I need to chop off this because I do not want this side touching anything else. Okay, there we go. So at 1M is connected to 0.047. 1M is connected to 0.047. The other point of the 407 is connected to ground. We need this connection here also to connect to pin number six on this tube, right? The preamp tube. So we need to run a wire from here to pin six. And again, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, straight across from it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a wire. Now at this point, nothing else needs to get connected to this terminal strip. So I'm going to go ahead and do the full-on soldering job here for this because I don't have to really connect anything else except for these guys. Okay, so this is nice and solid. The 1M is still very solid. Of course, the 0.047 is solid. This is pin 6, so we can just go straight across very little wire needed. 
All right, push this back. Sometimes it helps to, to grab it a little bit and pull it back. I'm gonna push it through one of the holes here. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, and cut this little guy off. Okay, perfect. So we made that one amp and the 0.047 UF and the connection to pin six. So that is done. That whole section here. So we got the 240K resistor to the two UF, which goes to the volume pot, 0.02 UF, sorry. And then the uh, 1M done and the 0.047 done. It's a couple more things we need to do. Um, this 0.02, where we went to the to this pot and the point and the 240K, which is this connection right. Wait, is it that connection? Yeah, that one here. That goes. We still have something else to connect there. See how this connects these intersect right here. But then there's it leaps over this wire and it goes to pin eight. So we need to make that connection to pin eight from this lug right here where this cap is. So we have pin six, seven, eight. We need to run one wire from here to there. Okay, should make a nice connection. All right, so. Okay, that looks pretty pretty good. It's in there, and we need to go six, seven, eight. We just need to bring it over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it a little bit. Chop that off. Um, Pull this out just a little bit. Go through pin eight. Crimp them in it. Again, keeps that good mechanical connection. I know I say it all the time, but I I got that tip from Terry of D-Lab, guy who designed this amp. And uh, it's no joke. Stuff really does make a difference. Um, sometimes I get lazy and I might put a lug through and forget to bend it. Um, but in general, if you just remember to try to bend stuff over, it's it's securing it that much more. That way, if the solder connection happens to crack over time, um, you create these little micro cracks, you're still mechanically turned and connected to that piece. So it will reduce the chances of you having a, a bad connection, even if the solder gets weak over time and starts cracking, right? That's what that's really there for. So we've got that run. What else do we have to do? Uh, we've got all this done, 0.02, 240, 1M, 0.047, connected to pin six, connected to pin eight. Uh, notice how pin three is connected to ground. There's no other components or anything. So we can make that connection, no problem. I generally use either green or black for ground connections. Um, I'm just gonna use black here. Uh, the green wire that I have in this pushback is actually really, really thick stuff. Um, so it's actually a little harder to work with. So I typically use this for uh, uh, doing like earth ground stuff like I did over here. Um, but for just most of my general ground connections, I'll use black. You don't, you know, it doesn't really matter. But I do need to go from, what was that pin number again? Three. So we have, this was eight. One, two, three to ground. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring hit that ground over to here because I'm going to have a lot of that preamp stuff grounded at that, at that point. Okay. So this is a very easy connection to make. Just need to make sure that is pin three for sure. Yeah. There's two, there's three. Pin three. I'm going to route him, uh, all the way, just kind of pushing it down close to the chassis just to keep the wire short. And I'm not gonna solder this one yet because I've got other stuff I'm gonna connect to this ground point. So I'm just gonna turn him over just to make sure that he's held in place. And uh, 
just kind of let them sit there for a minute. So there's going to be a bunch of other stuff connected around. All right. So that one's done. Um, that's the pin three. Pins two and seven are the heaters. Again, we'll come back to that last. Notice how this shape looks very similar to the shape we just saw over here where we did the bias. It was a cap and a resistor together. And then one side of it goes to ground and one side of it goes to somewhere on the tube. We have the same exact thing here. This is actually a cathode connection. So we need a 1.5K resistor. And notice how it doesn't mention wattage. 755 watts. That's important on this tube. But here, we don't have to worry about it. We can just use a one watt resistor or a half watt resistor. Totally cool, right? I wouldn't go lower than half watts uh, resistors if it's not mentioned. I always use one watt. It's just, I buy them in the kits and they're a little bit bigger. They're easy to see the colors. Um, you can go higher in wattage, just not lower. So 1.5, 22 UF, 25 volts. And notice there is a plus there. It's a positive and a negative connection. So we need to make sure we have a 22 UF cap. And this is the one I have I have that I'm deciding to use. This is a mod brand, but I don't think you'll see this on there. Let me very 25 UF, 50 volts. See that? So again, I can go up in voltage. I can, right here, it's just saying, just make sure it's at least 25 volts, right? It shouldn't be more than 25 volts going through the circuit at this point, but I have a 50 volt one that's totally fine to go up. I just don't want to go lower than 25 volts or this cap might not be rated high enough. But the value is 25 at 50, 22 UF and 25, there's not a lot of difference there. You can use something that's a little bit higher. Um, so I'm using the 25 at 50 volts and that's perfectly fine there. And it's really not going to change the sound of this amp at all by change, by having a 22 UF versus a 25 UF. Uh, but I need to put a 1.5 K resistor on there. Let's do that. And I can do the same thing I did with this bias resistor here. I can just take the resistor and the cap together and just sort of take one or the other and start wrapping this around. Right? And we'll get that soldered. Just gonna chop off a little excess. And uh, I'm just gonna solder it down here at the bottom of your screen. Just wanna make sure that the resistor and the cap are nice and secure together. So we have our cap. Now notice, see how the shape of the cap here has this little divot. That's usually the positive side. But if you're not sure, always look at look for the positive and negative symbols. This one has a positive. This is the positive end. This is the negative end. This is a polarized cap. So always pay attention to that. Not all these caps are polarized, but the ones that are have to be put in the right spot. So let's double check. We know that the plus end here is connected to pin five of the 6SJ7 preamp tube. The negative side always goes to ground, okay? So pin five, and then the other side to ground. Positive side is pin five. So we have pin, uh, we did three, four, five. So we need the positive side, which is here, connected to pin five, and then to ground. So um, one way I could do this is, just for like, we're starting to get, you know, run out of room a little bit, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I know that needs to go to this ground point. I wanna kind of keep all my preamp grounds at going to the same spot. So if I do this somehow and then bend over this, this direction, that should kind of keep it nice and clean. Um, I was thinking about heat shrink here. Uh, I'm not so worried about the ground side, but is there anything here that's gonna touch this? Uh, probably not. I'm, I'm gonna skip the, the heat shrink on this for safety, especially for a beginner. It's probably a good idea to use it if you're not sure. The, the key is, am I gonna have anything over there that's gonna touch that lead, that bare lead, right? 
Uh, I kind of want this to go underneath that yellow wire. Sorry, it's taking a little while, but uh, just trying to find the right spot that I want this to go in. So, all right, if I go under the yellow, and again, this is pin, this was three, four, and five. Make sure you're connecting it to the right pin. And pop this through the ground, which I have not soldered yet. I'll do that after I get everything connected. All right, so he's bent over and going to ground. So we'll, I'll solder this again later. I think I have something else I have to connect to that. But the component is there, and it's connected to pin 5. And I do have a little excess here I can trim off. Okay. All right, so that's that one. That's that 25 UFK and the 1.5K resistor to ground. Again, just make sure that the positive end is going to pin 5. And this is the positive end. And this is the negative end. Perfect. We're almost done here uh, until we get to the heaters <laughs> and the tone, the tone stack. Because remember, this schematic doesn't have a tone knob, but I'm going to add one. Uh, so the other part that we... We think we've got everything done here. Everything is done except for this pin four on this tube. And that's where our signal comes in. That's the input jack, right? The input jack runs, the signal runs to a 68K resistor, and then it hits a 2M resistor to ground before going into the four, pin four, which is the grid of the 6SJ7 tube, okay? So we need to figure out how to wire that. So I'm going to start here from the input jack, which means I'm going to turn this guy around. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Here's the input jack, right? Uh, I'm actually going to turn it. Let me see. Where's the signal lug is right here. And these two are the ground lugs. So if, if you're looking at the, if you're looking at the, the uh, input jack like this, Remember I was talking in earlier in a video in this video, um, the part that's on the base here is the ground, and then the, this is the tip where the signal is from your guitar. So that's where you want the signal to go out of this jack is this lug right here. This jack or this lug is connected to that base where it's metal. You see that? And then this middle one here is that little ground shunt that keeps the amp quiet when you're unplugged and you have it on, right? That's the only purpose of that ground shunt. So these two need to go to ground, and this need this is the signal that's going to go to the tube. Typically, in most builds, I'll use shielded cable, which is a totally different kind of wire, uh, to keep noise out. However, this is so close to the tube that I'm not even worried about using shielded wire. The way we did this build is the input jack is right next to the input um, tube, right? The preamp tube. So I don't need to use shielded cable to run a wire one inch, okay? If you had five, four or five inches or more, you probably want to use shielded cable and it'll keep noise out. So I'll do the, try to do this, something with shielded cable on a different video. Another thing I like to do differently with the input jack is Terry's got a 2M, 2 meg a resistor to ground with the input jack, but I typically use 1M. The Fender uses 1M. Uh, it, it's fine. It's it's it really doesn't matter. 2M, 1M isn't going to make a big difference. But typically this 68K resistor does. So the 68K resistor is going straight into pin 4. I'm going to do this slightly differently. This is the way Fender does it. Marshall does it. Uh, most of the big amps. Um, is you take the 1M resistor or the 2M resistor. Doesn't really matter. Let's try to set that there for you. And what I like to do is just put it on the jack here, right? So I want to basically take one side and go through the ground side of the jack. Where the heck is that hole? Here it is. And go up through to... Whoops, it's turning on me. I, need, I do need to tighten that up. Maybe I should do that now. Or at least hand tighten it a bit. 
one side up through the middle lug, which is the ground shunt. Okay. Now, keep in mind that this tab is already ground. It's already connected to ground. So you don't have to run something to ground because it's already connected to it. And in fact, if I do run a, a wire here to ground, it's just potentially going to create a ground loop because it's grounded at both sides, right? What does that mean? Well, remember our multimeter when we put it on continuity mode, right? Which means that if these two connect touch, it's going to make a beep, right? So if I have this metal part of the chassis and this part, it's connected. It's all one piece, right? What else is connected to ground? Well, let's see. Is this lug? No. Is this one? Yes. This one? Yes. They're already connected to ground. So here's your 1M to ground or your 2M to ground. If you just put it on the jack, it's already there. So I don't have to run any wires this way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this one on. <sighs> okay, that's on bend that over and then this one because this is the ground shunt both of those are like connecting one side of this this 1m resistor to ground because this is ground right it is touching the chassis and then take the other side and go to where the signal is going to go into our um it's going to go right into our tube now, you'll see this if you look at layout diagrams, not schematics, but layout diagrams for fender amps, champ, you know, all your common ones, you're going to see this 1M resistor solder just like this. So it's really saying take the signal and go through the resistor to ground, right? This is ground. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's going through the resistor to ground, right? But we need to take a 68K from the signal and go right into pin four. So pin four is, hold on, I gotta turn this around so I can read those pins. This was three, so that means this is four. Yeah, that's pin five. So it needs to go to this pin right here. So let's turn this around again. And I need to bring this over to here and through a 68K resistor. So I need to find a 68K and C is the 68K long enough to just run, just run it from the, the jack straight into the tube. In that case, I don't need shielded cable because it's so short of a distance and I want that to go to here. So that's plenty long enough, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just solder this part in place right now, just to kind of hold it there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop off some of that excess. <sighs> Whoops. Did that make a good connection? Yes, sir. Chop this off. Okay. So here's the 1M. Here's the 68K. And uh, probably going to go ahead and... Uh, Put some heat shrink on the other end of it. I don't think I need to because there's really nothing else around there. Um, but basically what I want is it's got to come all the way over to this pin. I just want to make sure nothing else touches that or we're going to have no sound in the amp. Because if that grounds out, that should work. Um, you won't be able to hear not anything. You won't be able to hear your guitar. Okay, so let's take that into pin four. There we go. Let's make a nice mechanical connection with it. I'm just gonna bend it upward a little. Oops. It's hard because I'm not using a, a stand here for this chassis. It's just so small that I don't see the need to use a big chassis stand <clears throat> to hold this up. All right, so there. Going into pin four. <sighs> I 
Make sure that's steady. Looks in, looks good. Cut off any excess. Okay, we've got our input jack wired. So that's how our signal from our guitar goes from here, which is connected to this lug. And you can see that by doing it, doing your continuity meter. If you're not sure, say, I know the tip of my jack is gonna touch here. See that? It's connected. So it goes here, out through their 68K resistor to here. Notice how I'm not getting any continuity between the tip here or even here because it's going through the 68K resistor. It's actually resisting the connection and you're not gonna get continuity, but here you will, right? So as long as that's a good resistor, you're good to go. Pretty close to being done, except for the heaters and the tone switch, the tone knob. So we've got this done, we've got our input stuff done, we've got all that, we did our power, tube we did our rectifier tube all our filtering for the most part we are set we can do the heaters next or we could do the tone circuit next i think i'm going to go ahead and do the tone circuit because it's not on the schematic but i'm going to show you how i actually do it we've got this as the tone knob here we can use this it's the on off switch as well but when you rotate the knob that's going to be our tone so that has to get tied in here somehow if I don't use the tone knob the way Terry designed it, the tone is just set, you know, uh, it's set statically, right? It's just one tone, you know, but I like to be able to vary that. And it's pretty easy to add a tone knob in a simple amp like this. We can kind of use like the Fender style one knob tone that kind of goes from, uh, you know, very dark sounding to very bright sounding. And I drew up this little diagram for uh, F1 Champ to add a tone knob to the F1 Champ because the 5 F1 Champ is uh, just a one volume pot, uh, one volume amp, sorry, one, one knob amp. So what I did here was, if you look at this tone pot, um, and then this is uh, this being the, the volume control, right? Um, it kind of shows me how I have to wire this up. So here's our tone pot over here. There's our tone pot here. We need to connect the left side over here through a point zero zero four seven UF cap to ground. So this point here where the way I drew it, this, this, this lug here is already grounded, right? So I'm gonna connect that side to ground. Okay, sorry, I found the cap. So I could use this little orange drop cap. See how it says four, seven, four, seven, two J. That's point zero zero four seven. Here's a Sozo cap. That's also four, seven, two point zero zero four seven. If you see a four, seven, three, that's point one zero four seven, or sorry, single zero point zero four seven. Uh, but a two means zero, zero, four, seven. It's two zero places. Uh, I'm going to use the Sozo cap just to follow the theme of what I'm doing here. These are a little more expensive caps. Uh, they are really nice. They do have a nice vintage sound um, in amps. Um, honestly, I like the orange drops too. Some people are like, oh, orange drops. You know, everybody uses orange drops. They're not good. These are great caps. I think these are awesome caps and they sound great. You probably won't even hear the difference if I use that one versus this one, honestly. Uh, but this is what's going to create a lot of our tone in our in our tone knob. So again, it has to connect to that left lug to ground. The volume pot actually has to get grounded as well on the left side, right? So this connects here. I'm showing that these two connect together, but really they're just both connecting to ground. This side gets connected to ground through a .0047 cap, and this one just goes straight to ground. So what I could do is actually, let's do that. We're going to keep in the theme of uh, grounding all the preamp stuff to one spot on the preamp, okay? So I'm going to keep the leads really long on this. And I'm going to shield it with heat shrink, okay? Uh, matter of fact, that heat shrink looks, I'm just going to, 
take a tiny, tiny bit off, right? I don't want this to touch these other lugs. So that's why I'm putting the, the heat shrink on there. Uh, let's go ahead and shrink that up. Just needs a little bit of heat to shrink. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, well, let's do it this way. Let's bend it upward. Okay, bend it upward. Bend it over, Let's solder that into place. Okay. Okay, and I just wanna make sure that, yeah, that heat shrink goes all the way up here, so it is not gonna to touch or mess with these. Now this needs to go to ground over here, but also this needs to go to ground over here. So I could connect this to this and then both of these to ground. Um, way I'm gonna do that is, I don't want it to accidentally touch over here and ground out over here, because, I mean, it could technically, <laughs> but um, we're gonna keep everything nice and clean. So I don't want that to touch ground prematurely. So let's put another heat shrink here and I need to extend this, right? So I'm gonna need some kind of wire to extend it. So here's a good way to do that. If you make a J hook, right? Turn that over and make like a little J shape. A piece that will reach to this pot, volume pot. So what I like to do is uh, put a J hook on this side. Okay, I'm just turning it over like this. Just make a little J and then link both of those together and crimp them down. Come on now. Okay, nice and tight. So that's a good mechanical connection. Let's solder it. Just want to make sure that solder flows really nicely between them. That should do it. Okay, it's good. And I need to cover that up, so I'm going to get a slightly larger, thicker piece of um, heat shrink just to cover that little spot up. I just don't want that accidentally moving and touching the chassis and grounding out prematurely. It eventually has to connect to ground, but this will cover it up and keep it safe, right? We only wanted to make one ground connection, not two. Or you can kind of get into ground loops, and you don't want that. All right, so I need this to come over to the volume pot. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in the theme of coming up through the hole. Doesn't matter up or down and I came up through the hole over here I came up through the hole here so now this needs to go to ground because this is this volume pot uh, oh, this volume pot for tone sorry pot for tone it's going through the cap to ground and this one needs to go to ground so they both need to go to ground so <clears throat> let's run that ground wire now real quick and all it needs to do is go from here, in this lug, and that now needs to go to this ground lug. That's our preamp ground lug. Remember, we're trying to keep everything in the preamp section kind of grounded to the same spot. Uh, again, that's just from experience. I've I'd like to have all the preamp stuff in one ground and all the power amp stuff in another, if possible. I find that that makes the least, uh, the quietest amps. Um, some people want to star ground everything to one point. I don't like that. I've done that, but tried that before, and I've had noise issues. 
Um, so, all right, so let's put a little dab on there. And I also want to make sure that the other stuff's coming that's coming on this side is good and grounded. <sighs> okay, let's make sure that everything going to that ground. See, that's not solid. See, I'm glad I checked that because I did not make a solid connection. It's because that lead needs to get Oh man, it's super tight in here. That's what he said. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'm having the darnest time. Here we go. I got it. Pull it out and I want to turn it over. I'm actually going to put another dab of flux on there because I didn't make a good connection the first time. I want to make sure that I get a good connection the second time. All right. Yeah, that stuff, it's flowing super, super good now. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so that is good. That's not coming out of there. This is good. There's one other one connected, that Sozo yellow cap here, but that is going through the bottom and it looks good. All right, so that's part of our tone circuit, right? We've got this lug. Let's see what else we have to do. The middle of the, sorry, the, the right side of the tone pot, which is right here, that needs to go through a 500 PF cap. Now we haven't worked with one of these caps yet. PF means picofarad. It's a very small, low, uh, low value picofarads. You get into UF, which is microfarads, and you get into PF, which is much smaller. So this needs to go from the right side of the tone pot to the middle of the volume pot over here, right? And then you can see that the middle of the volume pot actually comes down to uh, where like the signal and stuff would go, right? That's that's what this yellow wire is. We've already run that wire. So we just need a picofarad, 500 picofarad. And you'll see these little, um, I like to use these, uh, they're called um, mica caps, silver mica. Uh, and it has 500 on there at 500 volts. So again, I need to run this from the left side of the tone to the middle of this. We're gonna have to do the same exact thing we did here. Um, you know, these are kind of far apart, but I'm not worried about, there shouldn't be much issue with noise. The only thing I wanna be sure of is that these leads are not touching stuff they're not supposed to. So again, heat shrink is a good thing. Let's take a little piece, right? just to keep stuff protected. And I'm going to I say the middle of the tone pot. Yes, the middle of the tone pot. On that diagram, the tone pot's over here and the volume's over here, so <laughs> it's like I just got to make sure I got the right one. Oh, I think I did something wrong. I did something wrong. The tone pot, the 500 picofarad needs to go to the... <laughs> See, that's why I made a mistake, because I'm trying to film it at the same time. But see, this is the reality of what goes on. That actually needs to go to the right side. So... So that needs to go here. Um, what I might do is trim a little bit of this off now. Sorry guys, well you can, you're along for the ride here, right? This is kind of stuff that you're probably gonna do too if you're building amps. So we always double check the work. Um, yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. That needed to go to the right side. That 
500 pico thread from the right side of the tone pot to the middle. So we did that part right. It went to the middle of the volume pot. But now we have to see what goes to the middle of the tone pot. Okay, so we fixed that. Crisis averted. We'll turn him down like this. And uh, the middle of the tone pot just has a wire here that goes to uh, the, I thought I, see, I drew this wrong and I scratched this line out, but the middle of the tone pot goes to the right of the uh, volume pot, which then goes down through a cap, yep, which is our cap right here. So I just need to run one wire from here over to here. Uh, doesn't matter which color I use. Since I've used black and yellow, I'm going to go ahead and use blue. It needs to go here to the middle. So there to there. Simple one wire connection, no parts in between. All right, so I just bent that over. I've already got something. Ooh. Sorry, let me clean this off. I want to set a bad example. Clean the soldering tip. It makes a difference. Okay. One thing, if you're re-soldering something that's already been soldered, it's probably a good idea just to put a little extra dab of new solder on there to flow everything around that new part that you're adding. Don't always rely on the old solder that was on there because it might not be good enough. All right, so I've kind of got that pushed back there and it needed to go to the middle of the tone pot, which currently there's nothing connected to the middle of the tone pot. Right. Okay, I already had some solder on there, so I'm just gonna, oops. Do that, and I'm just going to make sure that make sure that that lead is bent up a little bit. You know, I might, like I said, not rely on the old solder and put a little extra on because it doesn't look like it. There we go. Okay, I think we're good. I just need to trim that. And that little tiny piece off. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Tone circuit is now wired in. There's a bunch of different wires here, but I just want to look at it and make sure that I didn't leave any extra leads touching things that they're not supposed to touch. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. I might uh, push this lug down by mistake. I might just lift that up a little bit. There we go. All right, um, and I talked about um, cable ties. Do yourself a favor, get some cable ties. You might not want to cable tie stuff right now because if you did make another mistake you need to fix, you're gonna have to probably cut off those cable ties and put some new ones on. But I'm gonna go ahead and take the risk and just put a few on. So what, what I was talking about with vibrations is super important. Um, I found that when I fix a lot of my friends' amps, you know, they, there's, there's things that, you know, especially with circuit board amps, there's little things that just clamp on and they're not even soldered. Uh, and I find that the more stuff moves around on you, the more it can get pulled loose from something. Um, uh, solder connections can crack over time. Cracking has little micro cracks and then you're not making a solid connection. That's why a lot of times, you know, if you have an amp that you're playing and you're like, man, today it worked great. And then tomorrow I, I took it to a friend's house and it's like, uh, there's no sound. And I shook it around a little bit and now there's sound again. Well, that's probably a loose connection. Something's not tight in there. But by adding a couple of these, see how much less that moves now? 
it's definitely going to stay a lot more stable and less pulling, less movements, even with vibrations, than having everything dangle. And it looks nicer too, right? So, all right, tone is done. The last step is wiring up the heaters.